think we are actually live now. <laughs> I've it's got a little. I've got a little sign up here that says <laughs> meeting is now streaming live on Facebook. So if you believe Facebook, yes, we're live. <laughs> yeah. So here we are again. And thank you so much again. We had so much to talk about last time. Oh, you did. <laughs> oh. <laughs> now, do you know it was so interesting, and and people really enjoyed the chat last time. And uh, I thought we should bring you back. And you suggested it as well. So thank you so much for being here again, Mo. <laughs> Today, I, 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 I thought we had a little conversation about what to talk about. And I think it's really appropriate and suitable to talk about where are we seeing Laughter Yoga go from here at the moment with the current situation and how are we anticipating the future is going to be. Obviously, we can't predict it, but have some thoughts about it. Hmm? Well, where do we begin? Where do we begin? <clears throat> so as a, as a business owner of more than 50 years now, or when I was going on my morning walk this morning, I was about to say more than half a century. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's always been my job to predict the future. Now, that may seem, seem crazy, and some people go, oh, you can't predict the future. But as business owners, you sort of have to. Because yeah. if you don't, the future is going to predict you. And by the time the future happens, it's tomorrow and you're still yesterday. So it's That's always... That's a really good point, if I may interrupt you here. That is a really good point because it is a change in the thinking. And as business owners, like you say, we are on the forefront because we have to think that way. But of course, we don't really know what's going to happen. It's just that we're ready with some solutions. Well... Yeah, and if I highlight people like um, uh, Bill Gates and um, uh, Zuckerberg and these sorts of people, these people don't predict the future. They make the future. They have come up with concepts that have actually made our future. So Apple comes out with a new device every six months or something like that, and people are queuing up around the block to buy something that possibly they don't even need because I've already got one that works. It's just that they've created such a demand that the people line up for their products. So they're predicting that by launching these devices, people will buy it. So they're actually predicting the future. And somebody's got to predict the future because the future just doesn't happen. Tomorrow happens, but the future is actually created by people coming up with ideas. So back in 1995, Dr. Kataria came up with an idea. He then had a vision. And from that vision, he made that vision happen. So he created 25 years ago where we are today, if that makes any sense at all. So this okay, is what entrepreneurs... It does. So this is what entrepreneurs and business people do. They predict the future. Now, if they're right, they're right. But if they're wrong, they're wrong. But imagine if you don't predict any future, you're right 100% of the time, but nothing's going to happen or at least not that's within your control, it's within somebody else's control. So I have predicted the future of laughter yoga and the world as it is. So happy to share that with you tonight. And we should make a disclaimer that everything I say is my opinion. Therefore, in my head, it's true. If other people have other opinions, for goodness sake, let's have the conversation and let's share, <laughs> and, and let, and let's share ideas. Social media has become this love-hate place where people go, oh, I put this out there and people go, oh, I love you or I hate you. Why can't we have a place where we can have a conversation and a logical debate about ideas? So everything... This is exactly I think what we're having. This is exactly what it's about. And I love what you're saying that it's from your point of truth and, and your ideas and, and so on, because we all have them and we all have opinions also about other people and, and so on. But the thing is, I mean, it is just a change in, in how we see things when you were saying about predicting the future and, and so on, because it's true that with every step we take, it takes us into the future that we created. So uh, so I love that. It's uh, For me, it's just a, a different way of talking about it, I suppose. It doesn't mean I disagree because I highly agree with you. It's just a different way of talking about it. I love it. <laughs> so, so social media, as an example, has been a place where you put an opinion out there and everybody goes, you're right or you're wrong. Mm. There's no, let's have a conversation about why you think that way. There's no in-depth conversation. So 
this one hour when I when the last hour went in a heartbeat, I just said, can we come back and discuss something else? Yeah. Because all we discussed last time was the research that I've done, which is great. Um, but today, and especially in the times that we're in, I think it's a good time to have a conversation about the future and what does the future look like. Now, we know what today looks like, and it's pretty crap, but today's not going to be like this forever. It will change for the better at some stage. So when it changes for the better, um, what does somebody else's future hold or what does our future hold in regards to laughter yoga? And as I said, having been in business for more than 50 years, I have spent since day one of the pandemic going, what does the future hold? And the reason I do that is because not many other people do. Now, that's not, a, that's not a complaint against anybody or a slur on anyone. I'm just saying a lot of people go into survival mode and quite rightly so and go, what do I have to do today, 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 today? I sat back instantly and I'm going, wow, how is this going to impact us in a year's time, five years' time, 10 years' time? Now, the good thing about that thinking that I had to do, we're already about to at Lafty Yoga Australia, there's our emblem. <laughs> we're, we're already about two years into the thinking about the future anyway. Mm. So this stemmed from the conversation that you were at and I was at in Frankfurt, I think it was two and a half years ago. Yeah. Now, two, two and a half, three, it's three, doesn't time fly when you yeah, get old? <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? This is what entrepreneurs do, isn't it? We don't just plan the moment we look forward and we we plan what is going to be in place for us to to move forward with it and and like you say creating the future uh or yeah. dictating the future or, or whatever you choose to call it so sure. we're not just thinking about what is going to happen today to to for me to survive sure and i like other people who think about that because that gives me more time to think about the future so if everybody's out there going, no, I'm going to think about today, I, I thank you sincerely from my heart because that, because that means I don't have to do that day-to-day -day thinking. I can think about more futuristic things. And I've done a lot of thinking about futuristic things. And I, I think I'm going to share that with you um, tonight, essentially. So ask me a question. So what? <laughs> so you do know this is not a an interview, yeah. <laughs> so what are the futuristic things that you've been thinking? Is that an okay question? <laughs> I, I just, I've got so much to say. I didn't know where to start. I was hoping you would segue. <laughs> This is an impromptu conversation. None of this has been rehearsed. I was just hoping you'd give me a lead in somewhere. <laughs> so, so, so here's the future. Here's the future. And it starts today with the impact that this virus is having on the world. Now, this isn't an isolated thing that's happening in Australia or in Melbourne or in the, the little seaside town that I'm in at the moment. This is a worldwide issue that's happening now. So this equally impacts us all, which is cool because if we get the collective brains thinking about what's going to happen at an international level, we're going to be ahead of the market. So let's go back and have a look at the market. So the market is in terrible shape at the moment. The people are really suffering, not just from a health point of view, um, physical health um, point of view, the anxiety is going through the roof because of concerns about will I get the virus and will I have my job and all these concerns. Anxiety has gone crazy. Um, the economic side of things, you know, countries are going broke. They haven't gone broke yet, but they're going broke because they're spending money that they don't have in order to try and keep the economy going whilst keep the health system going whilst keeping people in jobs. And there's just so much going on at the moment. And um, it's happening at an international level. Now, I, as I said, I've been in business for just over 50 years now. So in that time, I've seen a lot of things happen in business. And I think the, the, the sort of timeline things that I've seen, probably the first one of any note was back in 1989. We had a recession here in Australia. Mm -hmm. So this is where things went bad. So business and economies around the world and countries work on growth of some type. You know, we need to grow the economy in some way. And this was um, the first time that I'd been in business anyway. We were actually had negative growth over two um, quarters, which is called a recession. So I actually went through business in a recession like that. So this situation now isn't new to me because the same thinking applies. Like if you're drowning, the same thinking applies to swim to the shore. 
you don't have to create another way of doing it, the same survival mechanisms in place. Then we had the Y2K thing. So this was the year 2000. Now, this was actually a positive thing for my business because I was in IT. So I was on the top of the curve, making lots of money out of it, whereas other people were having to spend lots of money that they didn't have just to get through that particular time. Yeah. So <clears throat> that showed me that in business, there's good times and there's bad times. And there's a time when you're at the top of the curve and time when you're at the bottom of the curve. You know, so lots of learning in all of these major events. Then we went through the Twin Towers thing in New York. Once again, shockwaves around the world, but in particular, um, an impact on business here in Australia and in the Western world, because we went into this thing rather seriously called terrorism. And then not long after that started to enter wars and that sort of thing in the Middle East. So that was another really significant time when business had a real um, had a real shake uh, shake up like that. Two thousand and eight, the global financial crisis. So I, I I was in I was in New York when it happened, and uh, I was walking back from a night out, and all these TV cameras were around. I'm going, well, there must be a movie star because I'm in New York. And I said to the people, what what happened? And they just said Lehman Brothers just went broke. Now, I was business savvy enough to know that if Lehman Brothers went broke, that was it. They, they'd been found out and we were actually going to in, go into a global financial crisis. And there's still countries around the world, Greece, I think, you know, that are still yeah. not, not recovering from that global financial crisis. And that was 12 years ago. Yeah. And there's still debt um, being accrued by countries in that time, trying to keep the country afloat and stop it from drowning that's still being paid off now. So the global financial crisis was another significant one. Then along comes the pandemic. And I just mentioned those other ones to tell you that the pandemic is 10 times, 10 times all of the others combined, in my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely <laughs> agree with you on that. Because, I mean, since 2008, there was also, was it 2014, especially here in the UK or so, where we again had a crisis financially and, and so on. So, so it keeps coming up and down, up and down and up and down. But I completely agree with you that this is something that no one in this century has, has uh, experienced. Um, so no, no, they haven't, but we've experienced some of these things singularly anyway. So yeah, all we have to do like in, in such a small way compared to how it is just now. Because oh, absolutely. they contain it and, and so on. And, you know, absolutely. now they are, back then, I don't remember having the, the conversations with people who had all these conspiracy theories and, and so on about, <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, one of the other fascinating things, absolutely fascinating things that I've been watching with, with great interest is social media social media now social media has just gone to another level and someone said that one of the things that's going to happen is we're going to start pouring our hearts out on so we're going to start exposing ourselves in a way never seen before and i've seen that happen um you see other people people um, don't have anything else to do well they're working they're... from home you know that's the whole thing that's what people thought well <laughs> we're sat here at home and, and so on losing our jobs well well, podcasts and things like this were never around, but all of a sudden people have got time and they're going, hang on, I have time and a platform and I have a voice, so let's do it. Um, the other thing that's um, happening with social media is the conspiracy theories. Now, yeah. somebody said a couple of months ago, you know, the conspiracy theorists will come out because of this situation, because back in the day when this happened, that happened. And I'm going... That makes sense. So if we have a look at all the past events and see what actually occurred at those times and the thinking and the actions that were happened to get us out to create the new future at that time and then just bring it all together today, we know exactly what to do. <laughs> Simple. <laughs> it's It's... It, it's it's more complex because it's all happening at once, but we still know what to do. Yeah. We still know what to do. Business thinking, we know what to do. Looking after our health and well-being, we know what to do. 
all of these things, we know what to do. It's just a matter of applying them in a, in a world that's actually going crazy at the moment. Yeah, because people panic, didn't they? They, oh. they panic. And that's why no one sees the clear vision of, of what to do and, and that we actually know what to do, like you're saying. It's, I see so many people saying things like, <laughs> well, you know, eat healthy, eat healthy. The, uh, like, uh, the takeaways were closed for so long. The people really had opportunity to get healthy and strong and, and so on. And one of the key elements to it is what we're doing as well, that, you know, this is what really promotes health. And yet people, many people choose to stay in that serious, worrying, fearful conversation where actually we need to move out of that, don't we? Yeah, panic happens in, a, in an instant. Mm. And it's a reaction, not a response. And if you start to make decisions when you're reacting and not responding, you could get them right, but you could get them wrong. And the chances are you won't make as many right decisions as if you sit back and just take a breath and think it through. So one of the first things, and like I said, everything I'm saying is my opinion. So it's my truth. If anybody else has got some other truths, put it out there. Let's have the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> but instantly I said to the Laugh Yoga Australia community, um, um, let, let's just let's just wait. Hold back. Hold back. Let's let's do, draw breath because the decisions that we make today, especially online, could be with us forever. Oh, All right. So this yeah, this converse, this conversation is possibly going to be around longer than you and I are going to be physically on the earth. It just happened to be forever. So you have to think really clearly about what you do today. Now, my opinion: we panicked. Laughter yoga, we panicked and we went on Zoom instantly. Everybody started to start up Zoom laughter clubs, Zoom laughter clubs. And all of a sudden they were popping up here, 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 here. Now, it's not the idea that's the problem. It's the methodology and the thinking behind it for the long term. The way that we started it up and what we were doing online, considering it's going to be there for eternity, is that going to service us in a year's time, in five years' in time, in 10 years' time? Because the market's just changed. Here in Australia, please share with me, folks, what's happening around the world. I love to hear what's happening around the world apart from here in Australia. There is a new market emerging, and this market's never, never even heard about us, but all of a sudden they want us, and they're going, we need something to get us through this crisis. We need anything to help us stay afloat. What is it you can throw at us, you know, to actually keep us afloat, to keep us mentally healthy in this traumatic time, to keep us positive? All the things that laughter does, they're actually wanting right here and right now. Now, we have the short term. Well, what are we going to give them today? We better throw something at them today. But if we're throwing at them today something that in the long term people are going to look back at and go, yeah, I remember them. They were those people that were throwing marshmallows at the elephant. What a crazy idea. What a crazy group of people they were. Whereas if you assess what had to be thrown at the elephant, or maybe it wasn't an elephant, maybe you would have done it a different way. So that was the first thing we did. And I sat back and I thought, right, how are we actually going to present Lafty Over Australia today that's going to have a positive impact in a year's time, five years' time, 10 years' time, long-term thinking? I think we got that right because the inquiries that I'm getting now are from organisations and people that have said, yeah, we've sort of heard about you people, but what we just learned about you was amazing. So we updated our brand. We rebranded ourselves. We went through a, a total rebranding exercise. And the good news is, Lotte, we did that a year before this happened, not now that it's happening. All right, so if you're going to go through a rebranding, repositioning exercise now, it's probably going to take you 12 months to get up to speed. And at that time, the market may have come and gone. Or I totally else. get what you're saying. And I, I really agree. This is one of the things that's, uh, I mean, with the whole online market and so on, I, you know, I prepared that a long, long time ago. And it was ready. It was ready for delivering training and workshops when, when this happened. Uh, I was. Yeah. But. The whole thing is, and this is why we have Laughter Association UK, was to work together to, to deliver something really fantastic that yeah. the organizations would say, okay, we see you are an organization and we'd like to, to book this. But we 
we all have to do our little input because um, you know, I, I run my own business and, and so on. So of course I rely on, on having that stream. Yeah. But yeah. since starting to teach, I've always really wanted to engage with the leaders and the teachers I've trained so that we could work together because you cannot spread laughter by yourself. You know, it's not going to spread as far as we really want it. So it's always been for me about uh, joining together to, to promote this, but you know, you say you talk about how people um, panic and, and they do these reactive things and, and so on, and that's where I really like what you've uh, gone through with the whole process of rebranding rebrand, and so on in Australia, because that really is what we we have been trying to do in the UK. But there have been so many different sides of it and fractions and and so on. So. <laughs> So we're still, we're still, obviously, we're still getting there and we are working so much better together. And one of the key things in, in terms of um, the Laughter Yoga teachers pulling together is amazing. We had like a preview yesterday of the reunion for teachers and we were discussing the whole idea of, of the Laughter Clubs, which is for many leaders and, and also for some teachers is the main source of income in terms of Laughter Yoga. And, you know, we, we were talking, you and I were talking about how this would be a great thing to bring up because for so many years, it's been, no, 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 no. You shouldn't charge for your laughter club when actually we invest our time, we invest ourselves, we invest our money to have professional insurance, professional CPD, and um, really making sure we are up to date with what we're doing. So why should it be completely free? if we have these expenses? We're, we've already had one or two conversations already and the conversations will go on. Um, as soon as all of our laughter clubs were shut down, mm -hmm. I instantly went into the thinking, okay, so what are they going to look like when they start up again? Yeah. Now, because the world has just changed, if we go, I know what it's going to look like, the same as when before the world changed, uh, that just doesn't make any sense to me at all, at all. So we need to look to the sins of the past and what have we done in the past that maybe hasn't worked so well. Now, I'm going to put my hand up once again. This is my opinion, therefore it's true. Laughter clubs, the way that they were working, were not working well. I there completely agree. There, there wasn't enough of them. There wasn't enough people attending them, yet we kept we, yet we kept on and on, like belting our head against the brick wall and going, we know no other way. This way hurts, but we know no other way, so we're going to keep banging our head against the brick wall. All of a sudden, the world has crumbled that wall down. There's no wall there anymore. So we should sit back and go, that way was not working. Not in 2019, anyway. It might have been in India in 1995, 96, 97, and even up to 2019. You know, India is the is the home of laughter yoga, and it works so beautifully there because the Indians just embrace the whole concept. But from a Western world perspective, was it really working as well as it could have been? In my opinion, is no, it wasn't. For so, all the reasons you're mentioning, that there are not enough laughter clubs, there are not <clears> enough people, and so on. And this is one of the things where, you know, people would actually be out of pocket when they were running their laughter clubs. And uh, my great laughter yoga teacher colleague, Leslie Raphael, she was, um, she actually put together a calculation saying how much time spent and how much does that cost in petrol, in time, in resources and, and so on. And, you know, the, the other thing is when we're offering laughter clubs for free, we're undermining the idea of why should corporate businesses pay for for our services when you can go to a laughter club for free so we had this really amazing conversation yesterday to open up this and to work together to create something that can work for everybody not just uh, now but for the future yeah so predicting the future once again um the future as far as i predicted is we are not going to go back the same way that we were in 2009 what is it doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different outcome is the definition of insanity. So it would be insane. It would be insane to go back and try and recreate the laughter clubs as they were. Now, the good news is the organisations that rent out the spaces for us free of charge or at a, at a small fee or something like that, 
as well as our clients doing it face to face, it's not going to be the same. There's going to be a whole lot of sanitization issues. There's going to be a whole lot of hygiene issues. There's going to be a whole lot of stuff that's different. So if we try to go back with what we're doing that wasn't working well and do it in a new world, it's going to work even worse. It's going to be even worse. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> so, so it needs a whole new thinking. I said to someone in the very early days, I said, we may have just seen the death of face-to-face -face laughter clubs forever. We may have. That wasn't a prediction. It was just a thought that I had. That has since been solidified to we have now seen the death of laughter clubs as they used to be. Yeah. They're not going to be the same. They're going to be different in some way because the world has just changed so, so dramatically. And with the risk of um, harm and illness because we are in the projectile germs business with our laughter mm -hmm. sessions, we can't possibly go back and do exactly the same thing that we're doing for rules and regulations that others will stipulate. Here's the other thing. One of the many reasons why laughter clubs weren't working was because it was starting to cost us, actually financially cost us to actually run a laughter club because insurance fees were going up, room fees were going up, our lives were getting busier, um, so we had less time. So all of these things were working against us. So... I do believe laughter clubs will survive into the future. Will they be the same as 2019? Absolutely no way. Now, have we just seen the emergence of online laughter clubs to the point where they will be with us as a serious um, long-term possibility um, forever? And I think the answer is yes. Now, the reason I say that is because business has just gone into a hybrid model. So business has all of a sudden said to everybody, work from home, work from home. Now, when the virus starts to become under control, they're going to say, well, some of you come back and some of you, so they've actually gone, they will be going to a hybrid model where they'll have some people in the office and those people who don't have to be in the office will be there. So we will go into a hybrid model where we say, well, we can have our face-to-face -face laughter clubs. They'll look and act differently, but we can now have a hybrid situation where we can have a laughter club face-to-face -face or a laughter club online or a combination of both. Uh, so you might be... so exciting because, you know, oh, we hugely. did that a couple of years ago with some clients. And one of the key things about that, which is so exciting, is that we have the opportunity to connect people, not just go into an office and that's the people who are there, but really connect their offices so they get a much, much greater value out of the workshops that we run for them. And yep. um, I, I think this is, is when we went into the lockdown, I really thought instantly as well, we're going to be so busy moving forward. Um, well, it is a little got... bit slower, but I really believe we're going to be so busy. Um, yeah. Because so we're... people will want to nurture and look after their stuff. They really do want to keep them healthy and keep their minds healthy as well. So just to be clear, we've got two things that we're talking about. We've got laughter clubs mm. and then commercial gigs. Yeah, that was right. commercial uh, events. No, that's okay. That's okay because I do want to talk about the commercial gigs as well. But because let's stick with clubs now, yeah? Mm. Oh, but once again, the two of them are integral. <laughs> in me because, because, because when I said to the folks here in, in Australia, I, I said, well, make sure that if you do run a laughter club online in some format, you run it like a normal laughter session. I love because you say that because this is what I teach people. And I still see so many laughter club sessions where people are sat there and doing the, and I know that some people, well, the instructors as well. And, uh, and I, I think the laughter sessions online should be just like a laughter session in person. Because yep. that is what we do. Otherwise, you don't get the dynamic in the group. And yes, some people will be remaining seated, but we are not the people who remain seated. We're the ones who bring the dynamic. Uh, and, and that's what we love about the work as well, isn't it? Yeah. So when, we, when this circumstance occurred, I just said to the people, do it. Do it like a normal laughter session. Don't change it. Don't go on for five or ten minutes and don't do anything unusual just do it like a normal laughter session and they did and it worked now up until then the ones that i had seen never ever run like ran 
were run, sorry, like a face-to-face -face laughter session. It was as if it was online, so it had to be different. And it doesn't have to be different. Oh, it's a different... No. It's a different method of connecting, but the session is just the same. It's just the same. So that was I one agree. of the predictions. Now, and, and But the other good thing is I asked for seven people to run their laughter club online, but on a certain day. So overnight we had a full laughter session being run on every day of the week right here in Australia. So if ever I was out or I got an inquiry from someone going, I'm really after a laugh because of the virus and I'm stressed, I'm depressed, I'm anxious, I'm having trouble with my relationships with my kid and my spouse because I'm in the same room. I'm, can I go online? I said, yeah, just press this button on the Laughter Yoga Australia website and you will have access to a full laughter session done by a highly qualified and really, really good person who runs a really, really good session every day. Now, I couldn't do that before. I couldn't do that before because I'd get a phone call from someone saying I'm in outback Queensland, do you have a laughter club that I can attend? I go, no. no. <laughs> now, now I go, yes, I do. In fact, I've got one every day that you can attend. You just pick the day. So all of a sudden, because of this horrible, terrible virus, we've had the huge opportunity to be able to service every client throughout Australia with a full laughter session, provided it's done like a full laughter session yeah. should be. And the difference between the two of them was about this much. It was absolutely negligible. So Fantastic. that was one. How do you, oh, can I ask you a question about the, because then one of the things you say, one of the things that was not sustainable in the laughter clubs as they ran in the past now, yeah, was getting people to come to the laughter clubs and come regularly. So how are you finding that? Because one of the key things that I noticed is that most of the people who come to the laughter session, not all, there are some, some newbies as well, but most people are actually from the laughter yoga community. And I really would love for the general public to be attracted into the laughter clubs because that is what they're about and showing other people than those who have already trained how they can benefit from laughter. Yeah? Sure. So what's your question? So the question is, how do you, how do you get people other than laughter yoga community people into the laughter club because Same it's still we... about sustaining the laughter clubs with new people who want to get more laughter love it the same way we did before yeah but Had it wasn't it... sustainable was it we didn't get that many people in and, and no and that's the point that's the point so it wasn't sustainable doing it that way so what's the new though way that we're going to do it now the new way that we're doing it is online so it's easier for people to come along and experience a laughter session. Now, the feedback that we got early on and still get it is, oh, I like the online stuff better because I'm not as confronted as if I'm in a yeah. room and people going up and shaking my hand and laughing in my face. I'm going, wow, isn't that amazing? So it's a much gentler experience where people can actually be online. We insist that they have their videos on. Yeah, but, otherwise but they may not be insured actually. So it's for insurance purposes as well? Well, we've covered that as well to say so the two documents that we brought into, we upgraded our public liability insurance. Mm -hmm. Sorry, our public liability disclaimer yeah. sheet. We updated that with the COVID virus um, requirements and distributed that openly. We came up with an online laughter session format, the do's and don'ts about what you should do and what you shouldn't do because it's different. And the things like, you know, making sure that you screen people before they come and join your session. Mm -hmm. Make sure that nobody thinks it's a good idea to take videos and, and take photos of the session. You wouldn't allow that in your normal club. So why yeah, would you absolutely. why would you ever, ever allow that now? It's just such a breach of privacy. And, of course, the first thing they do is they put it online and, um, you know, share it with the world. And without the context, it looks rather odd. And can certainly and without um, not be permission as well, without the photo consent, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And um, so we got those documents out really, really quickly. And we just said, you know, read out these things to people. By the way, no pulling faces, no doing anything, nothing inappropriate. Make sure you don't video it, record it. No talking when you shouldn't. And the sessions ran beautifully, absolutely beautifully. So this gave the people joining in a lot more comfort that there was structure to it and they were going to be safe and they can actually sort of hide in their little box. And if they're feeling a little bit 
concern, they're safe because they're not in the room with these people coming up and imposing themselves um, on other people. So that's worked really, really well from that point of view. The other thing we told everybody is don't have an open class where people can just join the link. Have it on request through an email. So they have to send an email saying, can we join? Then you send them the link. And in that time, you have a talk to them. You get to know them a little bit better and find out why they want to come along to the laughter session. Give them a rundown about what to expect, etc., and then make sure that they are aware of the public liability before they actually start and they know all the rules. So that's actually worked really, really well um, from a perspective, especially the people in the daily sessions. We're still not being overwhelmed with hundreds of people, but they're saying there is still new people coming on board. And it's easier as well. So they don't have to time it where they have to go out, get in their car, drive 50 miles or kilometres or something like that in the cold and the wet here in Melbourne at the moment, they can just log on online. So if you so if you put together a list of pros and cons, you know, it would be a pretty even weighted argument about, you know, why should you and how do you do an online session? And we always said to the people, when this thing is finished to a degree where we can go back face to face, we're going to shut down the clubs and take that list of people with us and create our club. So we're still harvesting um, people coming online. Of course, of course, of course. But the thing is, I, I the same people coming back because one of the things is having people come back, even if, when they say, well, I loved it, I will come back. And then they may not come back. But and, and in a way, there are so many opportunities to laugh. So maybe they went somewhere else. And, you know, we, we keep informing them of our sessions, of course, but it's not always that they can make it. And that's the same as with a normal, well, normal laughter club in person, yeah? <laughs> where, you know, people would come to a laughter club and they would say, wow, I loved it. I'm going to come back forever. And they never show up again. And life happens. I know that. But it's, again, the, the idea that people come back. So we talked about actually a subscription uh, where people may pay once or and they are welcome to come back or they may pay like eight sessions or a year subscription or so and it does take away this whole idea that uh the thought that laughter cups should be free when actually it's just like a gym class or a fitness class or yoga or so where people pay for it and yes there will always be some who will offer it online for free but you know it's it's valuing it as well uh, we talked about how people who pay for things often value it more. Is that the same perception? Uh, yeah, ab absolutely. So once again, we've got a new world with a new opportunity. So why would we ever go back and do what we were doing before, which wasn't working? And certainly one of the ideas was um, to charge a subscription fee. This was the, this was the most popular um, that come out of the conversations that I've had with many people, one-on-one -on -one and in, in a group, is that, you know, if it was $100, payable once per year, goes into your bank account, so there's very little administration has to be done. You don't have to collect money. You don't have to chase up money. You know, if you would like to come along, you get the first session free or the first three session free or something like that. And then you're asked to pay a one-year subscription, just like a gym membership, and you can come along for as long as you want. Now, the good thing about online is apart from the Zoom fees and you're one hour per week, um, there's no other cost or your insurance. I beg your pardon, you still have to have insurance. But with that subscription fee, I've done the maths and you could get four or five people pay a one year subscription and your whole costs for the whole year are covered. Now, that then brings up the situation of, you know, do people value something that's for free? And the answer is no, they don't. Not as much as if they paid $100 for it. So I've got this I've got, my, I've got my coffee cup here, my donated to me at some stage. If that cost me $100, I would value it and I would treasure it. And I'd make sure that it's cared for and cleaned. If it's plastic and I got given to me at the coffee shop, I throw it in the bin. Yeah. All right, so you yeah. don't value something that you actually pay for as much. So the value to people, we have to think of the future. Yeah. Um, is there a different model that we can try now because it's different circumstances? to actually introduce something new? And the answer is yes, there is. Now this goes back to um, online training, very similar yeah. situation. I was training people successfully um, in numbers 
face to face before the pandemic hit, but I always sat there and thought, could it ever be done online? And so once again, I discuss things with people just to get a, a feel for their thoughts and ideas, collective debates and conversations, not, you know, I'm right and you're wrong or anything like this. And people said, no, no, it, you know, you can't do it because, 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 because. And I thought to myself, well, what, if a <laughs> what if a circumstance come along where all of a sudden we couldn't do it that way, face to face? What if something happened, you know, all the airlines went broke or we ran out of petrol or something like that, mm -hmm. something extreme where we couldn't do it, could it be done online? And, I'm, and I sat there and I convinced myself, I said, yes, it could. Yes, it could. So once again, as soon as the virus hit, there was a big conversation on social media, as you know. Yeah, about, yeah. Are we going to, aren't we? And I said, well, I am because there is no option. It's, and I've already thought ahead. Absolutely. What, and you know what what if, so, sorry, sorry, go on. That's right. So, so once the dust settled and everybody stopped yelling and screaming that it couldn't be done, I'm going, I'm going for it because I've determined a year ago that that's what I was going to do if I was in this situation. So I'm not going to procrastinate. So it's about being ahead of the curve and saying, right, when the situation does arrive, I'm going to do this. So it's very, it, it, it's creating the future. It was creating my future a year before it even happened in the event that something may happen so that my future can become my present. But and it is really interesting because the conversation about online training has been going on so long. Uh, and, you know, it's, it, I've, I've really stayed quiet over the years because I've been doing online training for 10 years. And, yep. you know, then suddenly it's, it's one of the key conversations we're having because it's so important in terms of surviving and not just surviving, on the contrary, growing this, because without new leaders, how is it going to even spread even further? And how are we yeah. going to change the world with the laughter that we, we so believe in and, and no work for, for us and yeah. for everybody else who get in touch with it. So yeah. um, so the uh, I, I love that it came up because, you know, it it's just a confirmation it's the right thing to do. And, and the people who've trained with me since, especially since lockdown online, you know, they've gone on to do some amazing things with it, with their life. <clears throat> well, my last training that I did, it was only a couple of weeks ago. Um, what happens at the end of a training, face-to-face, -face, as you know, everybody goes off in their individual directions, yeah. back to their yeah. homes and their suburbs and their towns and their cities or even their countries if they've flown in to do the training with you. And they're all by themselves. And they're yeah. going, oh, I have to do this all by myself. Within a week one week of the last training, my group in different parts of Australia were all of a sudden online doing a laughter club. Yeah. And that they were the amazing. group. But this is also one of the things with the online training because I decided to do a, uh, as part of the training to do a, uh, it runs over four sessions, yeah? So it's broken down a little bit more than you, you run it over two days, yeah? But then a follow up with a, a follow up session a couple of weeks later where they've been doing some things and they may have lots of questions. And when you think about it, when you do the two day training or three day training, you don't really give that opportunity in the same way. It doesn't mean that you are not with them or supporting them. It's just totally different. And I think the online community has really created some opportunity to, to stay connected and supportive in a different way. And support is really what you need when you're first a new it is. leader, isn't it? So yeah. it is, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so once again, that's a big positive. Mm -hmm. And I even said to the group, I said, I'm going to give you three months working with yourselves. And they said we're going to invite our friends and family. So they're already going to start to invite new people in. And I said, I'm going to give you three months, and I'm just going to drop in one night, and I'm going to assess how well you do it. And they go, Oh, <laughs> now. This assessment process, I could never do that before. People would jump on a plane and go back. I could never in three months' time get on a plane and go and assess their laughter club. No, I, I know. It's amazing, isn't it, that, you know, it's just Wonderful. opening up the world in a different way. And, and of course, it's, uh, yeah. you know, I, I do think that teaching online is really, really important that we follow, we still follow the format and, and give the idea of this is how you do it and this is the the habits you need to incorporate into your practice because 
once we're back in, in maybe semi back <laughs> to meeting people in person, then these habits are really, really key to how you interact personally and to create new habits online where you're just really stationary. It's not going to uh, be great when you go in and then you meet a group and you think, oh my gosh, how am I going to handle this? Of course, the yep. training is also so that when we go back to teaching, maybe we go back to teaching in the classroom, then the people who've learned online need to come back and, and learn the final skills to run in-person sessions, yeah? Yeah, absolutely, but... but... we don't know when it's going to happen. No, correct. We don't know when it's going to happen. And my theory is by the time these people have been running online sessions successfully for three, six or 12 months, they're going to walk into a room face-to-face -face and they'll just nail it. Yeah, but they need to create some habits in how they interact and, and so on, sure. which that, that will be similar to how you do it in person because otherwise it sure. will be very static what they're doing. And, and that is where I see that maybe some people who learn online and uh, don't have that dynamic that we teach yet will sure. have a problem going into running a group. Sure. Maybe, here's my point. Here's, here's yet another point. Of the seven people that were on my online training last time, four of them were yoga teachers. They already know how to run a group face to face. You don't have to teach them how to run a group face to face. They know how to do it. They're just looking for something else that they can do online until they can go back to face to face. So we're getting people I'm coming. That one of the key things that you can't really fully get the, the sense of is, for example, the laughter meditation. Until you're there in person experiencing the laughter sure. meditation, this is why, you know, finishing in person whenever possible is one of the key things because that's where sure. you really get the, the heart of it, isn't it? I mean, it's the favorite part. I love all parts of the introduction or the, the session, but the laughter meditation, you know, it's beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> It, it's wonderful and being in a room with people lying on their backs heads to head is different mm. but we still manage to get to a similar situation oh, yeah. on still manage to get to a similar situation online so enough about that so let's get on to commercial gigs so there's uh, there's, there's a there's a whole new market there a whole new market there and when we had really nasty bushfires, I think it was back in 2008, some 12 years ago, um, the the uh, communities are still recovering now, some of them, from a mental health perspective. And you had it this year as well, didn't you, early this year? And then we had it late last year, early this year, just before the, the virus come along, and I'm going, oh, this is going to take them a decade to get over. Now, as I said before, all of these tragedies that we've had, put them all together, multiply them by 10, that's what this virus has done. So the impacts of this virus um, will last beyond you and I being physically on Earth. Um, there's possibly no doubt about that at all when it comes to economies recovering, trying to pay back the debt that's there at the moment. Never before have we seen such debt, um, destruction to business, to people's livelihoods. You know, this will go on for a generation at least, at least. So we need to be ahead of the wave. So we've got the... COVID wave happening while well, the mental wave is right behind it. You know how waves come in in sets where you've got the COVID wave right behind it is the mental health wave. And are we ready for that? Are we positioned for that? So the answer is, or here in Australia is yes, we are. And um, we're ready for it because we have the online application done again. So once again, I've been practicing this concept with online, maybe some others have as well too, not in the way that we do, <coughs> pardon me, doing it now where there's only online, but, you know, I've been sort of trialling the online concept for some time at our conferences that we have every year as well. And I need to mention that before I go. And um, so <laughs> the ability to adapt it to an online format from a business perspective was really, really quite easy to be able to do it. So when business goes back, it'll be a hybrid business. So they'll have some people working from home, some people working from the office, you know, it'll be this hybrid model. So can we do it at the office? Yes, we can. Can we do it at home? Yes, we can. Can we do it from the office and invite the people in from home? Yes, we can. So all of a sudden we have this huge demand from people who have really been impacted mentally 
and we can do it in whatever way we like. The whole concept of everybody having a, an iPad now, we can have people in hospitals with their iPads and doing a session. We can have it on screens in aged care facilities and doing sessions. Is it exactly the same? No, it's not exactly the same. Is it just about as good? Yes, it is. It's oh, better than not. Yeah, it's better than not being in there. So the reach that we have now by embracing and utilizing technology is just unbelievable. And if everything goes back to face to face, is business going to go back to face to face? They may go. No, no, no. We had online laughter sessions in our aged care facility. They were fine. We actually enjoyed that. It was easy to organise. It was easy to get the group together. It was easier for the facilitator to come along. Let's do that. Let's also, keep doing because the, the organisations who organise these events, they have the ability to, to record it as well with our oh. session, of course, yeah? and that means they can use it again and again and again. Yeah. Yeah, so we've been going for 50 minutes. I knew we'd run out of time. I know, <laughs> I know, I can't. <laughs> I have to do another one another time. Um, here, here's my big hint to people. My big hint to people who think that it can't be done online, it can. Laughter clubs can be done online. Laughter commercial work can be done online. Laughter training can be done online. I'm doing it successfully myself. It can be done, all right? Here's the other thing. Do not drop your prices. Do not. I totally agree. I had this conversation yesterday as well. Don't do it. But the thing is, people are still afraid of asking the price, even when it's in person. So it's it's getting past that hurdle of actually asking the price. This is one of my my key things I talk about as well. That you know, it's it's a professional service we are offering where people benefit on so many levels in the in an organisation where. We're addressing some of the pains and, and what they're going through. So, of course, it has a price. Everybody who's providing professional services to companies and organizations, it, yeah. it has a training price. Absolutely. Yeah. So do not drop your prices. Add value. And by adding value, you can get more people on the yeah. course because they can stream in. You can give them a recording of it for someone who couldn't be there. We can do all of these things that we couldn't do before. So why would you ever drop your drop your price? Just add value. So that's my business tip for today. Um, so the future for us is rosy. It's really, really rosy, provided we go into it with a totally different and new mindset. So if anybody is out there going, oh, I've got a good idea. Let's go back to how we we're doing it. Um, there is no future in that. <laughs> it, it, no, there is no future in that. That's, I'm not being nasty. Anymore. I'm just saying there's no future in that. That's going back to the past. Yeah. And we, we have to move out of the past because this virus has given us the opportunity to kick down the wall and walk into a totally new space. Now, for those of us who are going to do it, it's, it's this way. Follow me. Follow me. For those of us who don't want to, who don't want to do it, for those of us who don't want to do it, that's fine. But just be aware that I've, I've gone. I'm out of here. Yeah. I'm we are moving forward with this definitely in a different direction than in the past. Yeah. The thing is, people keep saying, "Oh, I hope we're go soon going back to normal, going back to normal." But normal is not going to happen. It really is. No. Not, that is how it was in the past, no matter what normal we're talking about, whether it's our personal yeah. life or work life or whatever it is. Um, I totally agree. And of course, I want to add as well that when I talk about these things, it's also, of course, from my point of view and my perspective, it just so happened to tie very well with your perspective. And uh, I'm just wondering if you've got Danish roots or so. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've got blonde roots. Is that, is that what you're talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I think what you'll find we have in common is business roots. So business people tend, tend to think like business people. So that's all it is. So I've always, um, I, I went to a conference where I was presenting laughter yoga one day and there was a, a symbol on the wall and it was this heart and a brain melded together and it had social heart, commercial mind. I'm going, that is, that is brilliant. So that's how we run laughter yoga, social heart commercial mind that's how i run my laughter business i have a social heart i still do my laughter club yeah. free online that's my giving back i run laughter yoga australia free of charge nobody pays a membership to be a part of our crew 
and but I still have a commercial mind that goes, where are the opportunities financially or not? It's just a matter of having a commercial mind. So that's what you and I um, have in common. Yeah. The, um, I, I love the, uh, I remember you said it a couple of years ago, um, the uh, social heart commercial mind, and it really struck a, a chord with me as well, because that is, you know, that is, our background isn't it and this is our future with not look as well so um so it's bringing it all together and i think that's what's so exciting about it and of course not everybody has that background but no. we can still make it work and we can still uh, work together to 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 go into the future together with uh, with both an open mind but also knowing what we're going to do to create it sure well we can feed ideas off each other. Now, the thing with um, our own countries is it's a different business plan for each country. You can't have the same business plan for different countries. You've got to have your own mini business plan. So, but I still like talking to people like yourself and other people around the world just to say, what are you doing over there? I love sharing ideas and finding out what's working for them and what's not working for them. And I've been, I've been having these conversations with them about the new world and, you know, when we get the opportunity and the opportunity is now, what are we going to do now that's going to impact on us in a year or two or five or 10 years time? Now, I've made a terrible mistake because I was predicting that at the start of 2021, we would just about be back to where we were, not from a delivery point of view, but from a financial point of view. So I gave us a year. We're just right off the whole year before we'd be back to where we were at the end of 2019. Um, we're there now. We're there now. So I made a terrible was mistake. It a terrible prediction, was it? It, it was horrible. It was horrible. <laughs> but, you know, so the the demand, the demand is there now. And guess what? We were ready for it. I certainly was anyway. So we got back up and running uh, really, really quickly and back to where we were at the end of 2019. But it's with a new market and it's with new ideas, it's with new branding. It's with new opportunities and it's just so exciting when everything old is new again. And um, yeah, that's just where we're at at the moment. So we're about to run out of time. So I'm going to finish with a blatant plug and that is our conference that's coming up. So this is, I think the 16th year that we've had the conference, 15 or 16. It's the longest consecutively running laughter conference in the world. Fantastic. Congratulations. It is, it is wonderful. I'll be sharing yeah. the link, but say some more about it. Yeah. yeah. So by the end of next week, we'll actually have the full website up and running. We've got all the presenters um, uh, um, already together. We've yeah. got doctors. We've got doctors. We've got pre professors. We've got breath experts. We've got a, people in neurogenetics, a, a whole lot of fascinating people. Okay. And we'll have the whole um, website up and running. So here's my point. We could have said, oh, it's too hard. We'll just cancel the conference. But once again, I was ready and I'm going, what if one day we couldn't actually travel to the conference for whatever reason? So as soon as it was it was um, deemed that we couldn't all be there, I just said, we're going online, fully online. So the Laughter Yoga Australia Conference will run with Laughter Yoga presenters um, to showcase the best of the best here in Australia. Um, I believe they are outstanding presenters because they're not just from our herd we invite external people in to give other perspectives of mental health and yeah. Yeah. And, and overall health and um, uh, psychology and psychiatry and neurogenetics and all that sort of stuff so it'll be hugely valuable so uh, you will see a fair bit of advertising going on for that um, Brilliant. by the end of next week um, it will be all online this what year. What is the date for it? Oh, 23rd of October from memory. I don't have my diary out, but I think it's, 20, it's, the, it's the last Friday in October. Is it just it one day or, or is it? Just one day. We used to have the Joy Festival, but the yeah. Joy Festival was very face-to-face -face and interactive and workshops. That's something that's not going to happen okay. um, online successfully, um, but the conference will. So we are going ahead with that. I'm very excited about that. So watch out for the... Laughter Yoga Australia Conference, the longest consecutively running yeah. conference in the year. Amazing speakers, amazing speakers um, that talk at a very, wait. very... Uh, I can't wait. I'll click on to it. Definitely. I can't yeah, wait. Cool. And yeah, on, yeah, on the YouTube uh, um, video, I'll share the link for the um, uh, 
uh, the, the conference in Australia. Thank and you. When you got it ready, yeah? But send sure. me the sure. details and I'll put it on there. Hmm? Yeah, it'll be ready within a week. Our time is up. I know. <laughs> what a great, a, another great conversation. Thank you so much, Mo. My pleasure. Thank you for the opportunity. Always good chatting and look towards the future. The future is exciting. Absolutely. To, always, always. To that, today is crap. Today is crap. But the future for us all is very exciting. Very exciting. So that's what we have to look forward to. <laughs> Absolutely. And we're creating it right now. Yeah. We are. <laughs> Absolutely. So um, so you have a really, really good evening. And I'll I will. I will. I'll just finish by signing off and bidding you all farewell. <laughs> <laughs>